Let me tell you the story of one of the best Italian tenors of all time. No, it's not him. It's Mario. Mario del Monaco was born in 1915 in Firenze. And no, I know, he was not born in Monaco. It's disappointing, I know. When he was a kid, he studied the violin at the Conservatory of Pesaro. And at 13 years old, he was chosen to sing at an inauguration. After that, he was very soon sent to a voice teacher. So he completely gave up the violin and he focused on singing and on painting, apparently. At 21 years old, he wins the competition of the Opera of Rome. So he wins the first prize alongside five other contestants. These Italian voices are so good. How do you want us to pick a winner? He then went to the Conservatory of Rome, but his new voice teacher was not a very good fit for him. So he was set back a few years in his training and he had to go back to his old voice teacher. At 24 years old, he did his big debut on the opera stage of Pesaro, singing this. after, he sang for the director of the Puccini Theatre in Milan, who offered him four shows of Madama Butterfly. It's big stuff. Big, big stuff. With success, he starts his big career and sings all the great roles. But we are in the 1940s and World War II is happening. He's an Italian young man, therefore he has to go and fight. He kept on singing, but only for his comrades and superiors, who were very impressed. After the war, he sang for the reopening of the arenas in Verona. And in 1947, he sang for the first time outside of Italy. He went to London to sing Tosca in Covent Garden. Ten years later, he makes his debut in the United States singing Norma with Maria Callas. The cast! The cast! Wish I would have been alive to see that. In 1963, on his way to perform in Munich, he was in a car accident. A pretty bad one. And everyone thought that it would take him out of the opera stage. But he's a survivor! And eight months after the accident, he went back and sang. He started singing some Wagner at the end of his career, but mostly he was an Italian opera specialist. One of his most important roles was Otello by Verdi. Just like he wanted, in 1982, he was buried in his Otello costume. 